Hello, my name is Ryan. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going to be talking about three mistakes made when selecting the brushless motor within your power system. Now, the first two items that we're going to be looking at are very closely related and have to do with the output of the brushless motor. The third item is a little bit more physical and it's definitely something to be considered when looking for a brushless motor. So let's get started and talk about our first item. Now, one of the first mistakes or primary mistakes that many make when selecting a brushless motor for a power system is the choice of the KV value. Now, this can happen if you are looking for something that has quite a bit of performance. When you're looking for performance, a lot of people end up kind of seeing the KV value match up with performance, higher KV value, more performance. And that we know is not necessarily true, but it does come out, you know, in specific motors. And we looked at the KV value in a previous video where we have two brushless motors being compared. Maybe that's where this sort of idea kind of gets shared. Now, one of the things that's important for picking the proper KV value is making sure that we fall within a very specific range. Now that range has to do with the total amount of load that we wish to place on that motor, which is going to be very application specific. As an example, we can take multiple different applications and look at the ranges of RPM for them. For example, if I'm flying a radio controlled airplane and it's going to be more of like a trainer style airplane, I'm going to be running in the slower RPMs side of things. Something that's going to be operating in the slower speed area is going to probably be around the 9,000 to 15,000 RPM range. Now, if we're looking at a radio controlled boat, we're going to be upwards of the 20 to about 35,000 RPM range. And then if we go a little bit further and we look at electric ducted fan jets, we could be anywhere from, again, around the 25,000 mark, upwards of even 45,000 RPM. And of course, these are just general ranges. You have to know your application very specifically to know where you need to pick in terms of your total RPM. Now, one of the ways that we calculate this total RPM is we take our KV value that we just spoke about, we multiply that by the voltage of our battery, and we end up with a total amount of RPM. That is what we're primarily focusing on when we select our power system. Now, the second one that closely ties into this that I want to talk about is the selection of the lithium polymer battery pack. We have to know how many cells we plan to use because this directly relates with the KV value producing that overall RPM. Now, some of the reasons why these brushless power systems are blowing up today is because of the selection for the lithium polymer battery pack. If we're trying to select a brushless system to deliver around 30,000 RPM and you go ahead and you grab your brushless motor first and then you expect to place that same battery pack that was used in the stock application rather than reconfiguring it to work as a system as a whole, not just as a new motor or new entity, then you get yourself into trouble where you may actually be over delivering in terms of your voltage to that brushless motor. You're demanding too much RPM. It's not the voltage that's going to destroy that motor. It's the load that you plan on placing it. Unless what you do is you optimize your load. So things can get quite complicated as we're talking about all these different parameters. Specifically, we want to make sure our voltage and our KV value are going to be selected so that we land in a specific range for our application. That is step one. The second step would then be applying a specific load to it. And that is what you want to monitor. So first you select your power system in terms of all the parameters you're looking for to match that range. Second thing is you're going to have to load it correctly. Too much load, too much heat. It's that simple. So the third mistake that we can make when selecting our brushless motor within our power system is related to the physical size of the motor. When we talk about physical size of the brushless motor is often referred to as the can size of the motor. And many companies like to uh, denote this in terms of a metric millimeter diameter. So we could say something to the nature of like 40 millimeters in diameter for a good size in runner and a length. So we'd have, let's say, an 82 millimeter long can size. So that would be referred to as a brushless motor of 4082. That's how you know exactly the diameter and the total length in millimeters. That's using the metric system. Some companies prefer to you know, denote their motors a little bit different using the imperial system. For example, new motors, they use the, the imperial system and they measure it a little bit different. It's not the actual can size, it's actually internal. Uh, so what we 
want to look at when we're selecting our brushless motor is the amount of power that we plan to draw from our brushless motor. That's what we need to know. If we know how much power we plan to pull from that brushless motor, now we can size it correctly. One of the reasons why brushless motors were overheat and eventually fail is because they're not able to dissipate the amount of heat that you're expecting that motor to deal with. In which case, when it can't deal with it, the electrical windings within it eventually burn out, burn up, and then everything shorts out and you get a failed motor. So what you can do to relieve the heat issue is get a larger can size. This will allow you to run that amount of power that you plan to draw. If you are able to optimize all three of these areas, you will end up with a reliable power system. So just as a summary, we end up looking at the KV. Make sure you optimize the KV with your lithium polymer battery pack. It's often a good choice to start with your lithium polymer battery pack, then select the KV of your brushless motor. Once you've selected the KV as well as your lithium polymer battery pack, you now know the specific range of RPM in order to match that application. Run through that math in order to figure that out. Then the next thing to do is look at the amount of power that you plan to draw from that brushless motor and correspond that to the size of the brushless motor. So that's the physical size of the brushless motor. That's how you can make sure that you have a reliable power system in terms of your brushless motor. Now, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.